Jose Mourinho has been sacked by Roma. The man who's won 25 trophies at Porto, Inter, Chelsea, Real Madrid and United is now without a job. He took Roma to the Europa League conference title but was sacked this year whilst in ninth place. So today we're not rebuilding just one team, we are rebuilding the career of that man right there. Yes, it's not a face scan. I know, but he's back where the fame started with Porto. And do you guys want to get some kits like this one? An insane replica. For great prices, visit Soccer Deal Shop. The link is in the description below. And if you use MWS10 in the checkout, you get yourselves 10% off. As today's objective overall, of course, is to make Jose great again. We've got to win that UCL title, but not only that, we've got to win three trophies overall with two of them being in different countries. We can't just win three in one country. And yes, that means we need different teams. As we're going to say, we have to be in charge of at least three. So sorry, Porto fans. We are going to do as best to rebuild this team, but we're not going to be here in the long term. As he's gone from coaching Madristas to now coaching, of course, a team that he's won the Champions League with before, and I wouldn't say no to it again with Porto. In fact, we are in it this year anyway, and we've got to reach the quarterfinals according to the board. This is going to be quite fun, and of course, we kind of need a formation that would suit Jose, as I feel like he can do it with a three at the back formation, although known for defensive, well, it kind of is defensive if you class the wingers or left and right mid as wingbacks. Of course, they might not want to defend, but they're going to have to in this formation. I'll set them back a little bit to, to make them more defensive. And we need Carmo in the team with the potential this lad's got left-footed. I think it's a solid team to start off with. Who's his best players? We've got Diogo Costa, of course. Portuguese legend of a keeper. With his growth, we've got Medi Toremi. 40-year-old Pepe in the defense, and then a different Pepe on the wing. Interesting. Conciao and Sanchez are both on loan from Ajax. I've got to consider that. Maybe it's a different right-hand side of midfielder we need, and we'll have to check the budget for it after contracts. We've actually got 26 million, which... Hmm, isn't too great for a Champs League club. And we've sent a scout to Portugal as well, which has probably cost us a million or two, but we've got a decent player, Gabriel Ribeiro. We needed a replacement for the Ajax boys. Could he be it in the future? There is a lot of good players down here as well. Maybe we could sell the likes of Gabriel Veron, who... Oh no, he's 20 year old. Never mind, he's going in the team. It's maybe a centre mid we need, as we've got a 27 year old Grudic and 21-year-old Nico Gonzalez. So let's go ahead and get our first player, shall we? We've gone ahead and scouted at Nice, a team that's doing okay for themselves over in League 1, and we've stole Hicham Budawu for some Champions League football. Again, I hope I've got that name right, as we've got some good youth players through our academy, and a good one here. He won't play, but Renato Vega. Don't worry, Jose. It's not Renato Sanchez, player that didn't do the manager justice at Roma. But this man from Basel, 19 year old, 6 foot 3, 70 rated. We will do something with him, meaning we'll get him out on loan. But before that, or whilst he's on loan, train him as a centre back. He should be the next Pepe. And he's going to be here learning from Pepe. And this is how we line up. So, yes, yeah, some 75 rated in the squad, but. Don't plan on leaving Porto immediately. And I don't plan on making any more signings. We're going to get them players out on loan. But for now, we've got Estrella up first. Isn't that a beer company? I don't know, but we're going to see what happens away from home. And it's a draw for Jose's homecoming at Porto. Yeah, not the exact start I was hoping for. But in the meantime, you can see. Sorry, Rui Texiera. But we've got Claudio Tavares out on loan. Same with Gabriel Ribeiro. And where is he? He's gone back to Basel as Renato Vega, hoping for some growth. As our Champions League group, I think, is exactly the same as real life. Barcelona, Shakhtar and Royal Antwerp. We just want to get out of this group. The board say the quarterfinals. I say just get out. And that's decent for Jose's first year. And simulating to halfway through the chosen one's first season, you can see... 
He isn't chosen to be in first place. The Portuguese gods haven't given us it, but we are still definitely in the running, being one point behind Benfica, joint with Braga, just in front of Vitoria. Seems to be a cutoff there in the top four, which I love to see. So at least he's not going to get ninth again. Fingers crossed, as in the Champions League. He's got Arsenal. A team that he famously said won't win the Prem this year. No Arsenal. Nah. <laughs> As when we look at the group, it was 10 points we finished on. Joint with Barcelona, not bad. Not bad from the ex-Madridster. As let's see club growth. I do want to do some business here, like I keep saying at Porto, and it looks like Diogo Costa is part of that. Brilliant rating. Same with Tereme, who's gone up. And Nicol Gonzalez. Apart from that, nothing much recognisable, but I do like our number 99 in goal. It is Medi Taremi, top scorer. 13 goals in all competitions. Second is Danny Loder, an Englishman who shouldn't really be getting played, but he is. Don't mind it as the Taka Portuguesa. I did actually skip the first leg, but could we win a trophy here? We've got Casa Pie, and we are only level. But the reason I skipped it is because I've skipped straight to this round of 16 with Arsenal. Jose getting a tune out the players, but is it enough of a tune to beat a solid Arsenal squad? It's nice to see Champions League teams who actually are as the in real life as we've got the Champions League in our first season coaching. And what a game to start us off with in the knockouts. 3-3. Three, three. Unbelievable. But that, of course, was at home. So now we've got to travel away to Arsenal and Saka. Starboy Saka cancels out Jame's goal. And Porto, usually the team that wreck me in the Champions League, are the team that gets wrecked when we put Jose in charge of them. I say get wrecked, it was 5-4 and Braga get wrecked as well. No luck really, apart from Benfica for the Portuguese teams, but we need to beat them in the league. As come end of the season, please pray that we've beat them, as it's not showing that first, actually. The special one, the chosen one, has won a trophy season number one. The Taka Portuguesa, and that is a big relief off Jose's shoulders. Good stuff. Of course, we can look back at the Champions League. Wow, El Clasico final. That is is something I'd love to watch. Of course, we're watching Portuguese football now, and yes, Jose Mourinho has done it. He's won two trophies here in Portugal. Porto may be back to their best under him. 86 points, but we need to see the team. It's, it's not that great, you know? It looks like we've just got many strikers on the bench that have all contributed towards winning the division. And we can't, of course, count out the impact that Diogo Costa must have had in keeping the ball out of the net, but to Remy with 33 goals in the Liga Nos. I think if we do find another club, hey, do we move on straight away now? I don't know, but if we do, maybe we take the Iranian striker with us. After all, 33 goals under Jose, 16 for Navarro, and 12 for Danny Loder, as we've got to decide, or other clubs will decide, if we go overseas for management, because we've won two trophies, both Portuguese trophies, the only thing we can do with Porto now is win the Champions League. And winning the Champions League with this side, I don't know. I don't think that's possible. Of course, Taremi's doing well, Costa's on international duty, and Pepe is still at 41 year old, 81 rated. Unbelievable. As to be fair, the board may be trying to keep us here by giving us a bigger budget, 55 million. Could that make us a quarterfinal? Or further, I don't know, as that is all the board expects again, however. Oh, and another thing we haven't checked, our loan boys, are they back? How are they doing? We've got Vega, only gone up plus two, but then again, he should be good to move to centre-back. As there we go, we've clicked the button, and to be fair, it's took him up plus two, but that's not what I expected. I mean, he's not on the level of Pepe yet, who's joining Leipzig. Oh dear, right now. I didn't sign him up, because I thought he was too old. I didn't think I'd be able to sign him up, but it doesn't matter. We have gone ahead and signed a replacement. And it's one of Jose's mates. Surely it works out here, unlike Roma, as he was at Man United with him as well. It is Chris Smalling. He was at Atletico Madrid last year, so he studied every type of defending from Simeone to Mourinho, 
83 rated. As signing number two, walking into the dressing ground, I've left a bit of money after this, as there'll only be two signings, leaving cash for January. In the meantime, though, welcome to the club, Alex Berenguer from Atletico Bilbao. Not a cheap player, as he goes straight in the team, and to be fair, that's not bad. That's not bad, but... It's just a struggle taking this team further. I've tried to up the rating with cheap signings like Chris Smalling, but again, he's 34. We've got Taremi, 32. Costas, young, but the rest of the squad, the ages are all over the place. Which makes me think I want one more crack at the Champs League with Porto, and then that's it. Benito, find another club. As the first game up today is Rayo Ave. How do we do against these? We are the current holders of the league. We must have not had a good preseason, but it doesn't matter. Extra rest for the league title winners, and they go back to action the year after. Beautiful stuff. So far, though, we are slacking a little bit. I mean, it's only a couple of points. We should make that up, as we've got bigger fish to fry with a Champions League group of death, I'd say. Napoli, Sociedad, and Salzburg can cause a surprise. I wouldn't be surprised if we've struggled in Europe, as we're even struggling in the league. Braga sit top of the table. Again, though, the gap's not too big. Four points, and we've only been beaten once all year round. That is a sign of a defiant team, as we're in the semi-finals again, but there's... Sporting and Benfica. That's a harder run. No offense to the teams that were in last time. As, yep, that's right. We're not in the Champions League. Porto finished third in the group. I knew it was going to be harder. And to be fair, I mean, his team is going down. Chris Smalling. Not as good as Pepe right now. Well, I think the same rating, but significantly slower. Berenguer's not had an impact. We've got too many players at this club that it's playing random players, and I don't like this. Gonzalez not growing. Is our time at Porto limited? We did save a little bit of money, 60 million, but with us being in the Europa League, I fancy us just to go for that. Ignore the money and look for a venture new after it. As preliminary round, Besiktas, that's not an easy team. They must have been picked to the post in their group. Yes, by Monaco. Good going from the league on club, but again, we'll see what a semi-final if we make one. If not, there's a potential of a trophyless season. And let's see Europe, let's see. Leipzig, the team that Pepe's at and Monaco, who I spoke previously of, have made the final, so it's no success in Europe for probably our final season here with Porto, who knocked us out. There we go. Monaco themselves, as that means we beat Besiktas, yes, but round of 16 is the furthest we get in the Europa League. Not the greatest. Is there a cup? No. We've been beaten by Vittoria in the semis. This is not good at all, but that is good. We won the league with only one defeat. So Jose Mourinho's Portuguese prowess, dominance, whatever you want to call it, has continued to an extent. I mean, it's never bad to win the league you're in, but then again... I think we need to test ourselves outside of Portugal. I've said it enough. There's Smalling now at 79. Taremi now going down to 83. We'll be looking off-season for jobs, as there is almost a 90-rated Diogo Costa here. Whichever club we go to, depending on the budget, we could try and take him with us. 31 goals for Taremi. I would like him, but he's too old, and you need a younger striker. Danny Loder. Must have been working very closely with Jose. Or probably the attacking coaches. Because Jose might have not got that many goals out of a player. Then again, he is the chosen one. Who's got to do some choosing with the next club he may or may not be at. As season number three here. And Jose's been on the blower. He's been on the phone calling agents, calling teams. And he has three job offers. Three big clubs as well who have liked what he's done in Portugal, we've got Arsenal, Monaco, and Real Madrid. Now we've got to process this. Arsenal, I can't really see Jose going. Definitely not to the red side of London. And Real Madrid, it would be nice. But I just feel like that's a bit of a step at the moment. Jose's never been to League 1, so there is a first time for everything. Mourinho is taking the step. 
He's rejecting Real Madrid and he's going to Monaco. And here we are in League One. There he is, Jose, excited with the future. One thing we couldn't see though, and one thing we were taking a big gamble with is Champions League football. Monaco, how are you not in the UCL? Oh, so no top division football. Then again, the team is worthy of getting there. And I guess that's a job. For Jose, we've got to make us move. I want to check the squad hub. Funnily enough, it's set up in the formation we just used as our best players. A Yusuf Fofana, an injured Balogun, and Javier Schleiger, who's just one of the best career mode players. One of the best, but we've got a wing back who's decent in Vanderson. Don't know if we use him. I definitely want to spend some money, and there's the potential of selling players here. What's the budget before we assess position? It is 66 million. That should be enough, as the position we need is probably a centre forward to go behind him, Bolo for now, and a keeper, Will Ferry is a youngster at 19 and he can grow, but I just think to win Europa we need a player the step above. And this is the keeper that we're going to bring in, we've gone ahead and signed one straight away and we were signing old players really at Porto, and guess what? It kind of continues. We've got Coenca steals. We want to build Monaco up with youngsters, but for season number one, I want to just make the team all around. Again, it's no Diogo Costa. And there is the 19-year-old Will Ferry here, who could grow from a loan deal. I'll sit him on the bench for now. It's, it's kind of a shame that we've been blessed with really, really good keepers everywhere. And look who I've just seen in the reserves, who I've completely missed out on. Oh... That's why you check the squad hub, folks. We'll get him out of the club. We'll get a lot of players out of the club to sign up as our second signing, another oldie, but goldie. Welcome back to France. It is the signing of a Lyon legend, really. Memphis Depay. He replaces the already quite old Kramerick at the left-hand side. It's a good trio, especially when Balogun is back. But we have managed to get the keeper out. Ledesma leaves. We've got Jacobs leaving as well. So that's an extra 30 million. Plus we add a little bit already. So we're just going to sign the one player. So he can play kind of on the wing when Ramsey's not feeling it. Or he could go to right wing or right centre forward. Whichever you want to consider it as. We've signed to try and make him a wonder kid again. Justin Kluivert to Jose's Monaco. And I didn't even realise as well, as Kluivert goes in, not only have we got Jared Bowen on the bench, but then again, I'd rather Kluivert. I don't know why. Balogun is almost back. That is a delight to see. Of course, it's took a while to get to the first game. And not only have we trained for Fana and Schlager as centre mids, you would have just seen that Zakaria, the old man at Chelsea, of course, has trained to be a centre-back. Jose experimenting with players as he goes in. And Jose overthrown PSG. I don't know if Monaco won the league last year. Don't even know if they won the Europa League, but we start off with Toulouse. What does it take for them to lose? That's, that's a really bad joke. The playing kick and rush. Jose, of course, will be a bit more defensive with the team that he has, but Balogun off the bench, Clivert with a debut goal, and Jared Bowen. That is some big result to start us off with, however, since then, it's not really gone to plan. We're already dropping behind. We've dropped, I think that was four points. Still, Europa League, where we have Betis, Sparta Praha, and FCSB. We can definitely not leave Monaco if we haven't at least got them in the Champions League. And maybe a trophy, if it's the cup, if it's, if it's the league, if it's the Europa League. Just give us some silverware. We haven't failed in a season. Uh, granted, it's only season three. As in the cup, we have team name 131447. That's interesting. As in the league, we are behind PSG on one defeat. Then again, only two defeats for us. And OGC Nice sit nicely at the top. We even stole one of their players in season number one with Porto as they are in the Europa League. And I thought we were crashing out then. I saw Sparta Praha and I thought Batiste would join them. But no, Batiste, I think, should be Conference League. Not too sure. We're through. And as long as we avoid the old club and Atletico Madrid, I think we should stand a good chance in this. How's the squad looking? It's looking okay. Of course, 
Cliver is slightly out of position. But hey, it's playing him there. We don't care. Vanderson still hasn't trained as a right-hand side of midfielder. Don't like that slacking. So in comes Golovin. I'm going to make that change. You guys want me to play the players in the position as our highest rated. It's Javi Schlager, now fully trained as a centre mid. There they are. There's the ratings. And there's a lot of good ones in here. Like I said, Europa League should be decent as Cramerish is the high scorer with Jared Bowen sitting second with 11. Didn't expect to see that. Two players that aren't in my starting 11. Hopefully they carry us in the league. And to my surprise, we've actually done it so far. We've made it to the Europa League final, but it's Villa, Unai Emre versus Jose Mourinho. That'll be a good game. How did we get here? We beat Galatasaray and we beat Fenerbahce the game before that, of course. So two decent games right there. On to the semi-finals where the winner will face Dortmund or Atleti. Tough times and I am not going to be checking Anything else regarding league and everything as the team's slowly growing. Not growing that quick in League 1 compared to the Premier League as first leg at Villa Park, Golovin and Memphis Depay. The Elements ain't gonna like that. He was on the bench for them and over the two legs, we hammer the villains at home. 4-0. It shall be us facing BVB in the final and this... Could secure us Champions League football. But have we managed to do it through the league anyway? I'd fancy Mourinho over here in, of course, France. And it's not great. It's not mind-blowing. It's not overwhelming. But it's third position. I fancy another season here at Monaco. Because whatever happens, it should be Champions League football. As the Ramon sanchez Pizjuan Stadium for the final against the Amber Army. Black and Amber, that is. El Nyasiri up front. Savio on the wing. Good team. And please say that team can beat it. Again, not much growth, to be fair. Depay's gone down. But in the end result, it isn't a trophy in season number one. However, we haven't checked the Coupe Nationale. El Nyasiri with a final hat trick. Oh, that's frustrating. As that's even more frustrating. In the final, we lost 7-6 on pens. Of course we did. Of course we did. So it's still, I believe, the three trophies at the minute. As Vanderson, come on, I'll give you one more chance to hit a right-hand side of midfield position. Because I need him in the team to improve it. And probably another centre forward come start of next year. Or do we need one? Because Kramerick... Like Taremi, 34-year-old scoring 30 goals. Jose Mourinho, it's safe to say, likes an old player scoring most of his goals. As Balogun even played less games than him and got 15. The USA international, Jared Bowen with 15. Depay with 10. Golovin with 8. And he starts in this team. So another season with Monaco on the horizon. Can Jose do it in the UCL. And look at the state of it. Start season number four here with Monaco. We're not running away from it. Cliver out of position. Vanderson, luckily for us, in position. As what is our financial position? That's the most important. We've got 100 million from the board. First time the board's actually back to manager in quite a while, as they expect the UCL semi-final. Lofty expectations for a team that's only got a player who is 86 rated. But to be fair, a well-rounded squad. I think we need to sell some to get some in. So ruthless Jose here. We've sold Boadu and Ilikaus, who are youngsters belonging to Monaco. But that takes us up to 132 million. And is that enough to build a semi-final squad? As first man here, we've gone ahead and signed a defender from Napoli. A big Stall, strong one. To go in middle of the three, Piero Hincapié. Genuinely happy with that one, as we needed a battering ram up front as well. Jose's team, get it up to the big man, the Tammy Abraham-esque player. Welcome to France, Boulay Die. I wanted this man because it says he can change to a centre forward, so he's not going to be directly up front, but that'll be one tricky trio. And again, after two signings, it only leaves us with 20 million, but hey, Players can still go. Players can still leave us. And it's only that one trophy I want. I'm not talking just Champions League. Because in matter of fact, we need two trophies. Because we haven't won a trophy away from Portugal just yet. And we do have to qualify for the Champs League. We've got to beat Antwerp. As I'll tell you now, 
We should be okay, though. We've got a 3-0 win in the first leg. As Strasbourg up first, they've got the likes of Sargent. And that's about it. Talia is a decent defender, but our defense is a lot better. If we're going to win the league... Or do anything in the league, we've got to beat um, Strasbourg and win games like that, which we have done. And that's the start Jose would have wanted. We sit top of the league, four wins from four this time round. And PSG have drawn a game, which is good for us as our Champions League group. Nottingham Forest, Nuno, you are the man for Nottingham. And Wolfsburg, Bromby. I think we should be going through on that. We've been gifted with a group. And hello, Will, still. Because we're looking at the Coupe Nationale, of course, the 1st of January. Stade de Rems will be our opponent. Wouldn't mind winning that as the league. Oh, this is going to be difficult here in France because PSG are five points ahead of us. Still, only two defeats. And second place is good from Jose. Will it get him another job, though? I don't know, as he has, of course, progressed in the Champions League. If we wouldn't have done, I would have been upset. But saying that, we were beaten to top by Forrest. And we've drawn Barcelona, of course. And ex-Madrid manager Jose will want to be beating them. And this is how the squad looks as well. It is doing pretty fine. I mean, we don't have a recognisable striker on the bench. That's a bit concerning. Concerning I didn't even realise that. And Depay's going down. But then again, Balogun is 87. Dia is 85. And an 87 Hincapié and Schleiger. Doesn't half know how to get his best out of players, does Jose. Could this be a season for the UCL? Let's get going, though. Union Park Stadium for Barcelona. Like I said, eager. Eager and desperate to beat Barca. But then again, it's a first leg defeat. We do get goals from Fofana and Pablo Torre. The ex-player, of course, has second leg. Oh, my Days. We've gone to Camp Nou and we've played Jose football, keeping a clean sheet with a centre back scoring, Balogun and Javier Schleiger. Phenomenal. How has he pulled this off? I mean, how has Nottingham Forest pulled off beating Atletico Madrid? It's all going down here. Man City beat Porto. That's not great for the old club. Unfortunate for them. We took them as far as we could as it's another ex rival here. Jose was into manager. And we've got AC. That doesn't stand for air conditioning. However, I would like to blow the team you see in front of you away. Zakaria suspended for this one. But still, we do go ahead and win. I knew Dorgu would be a weak point. Although he scored, we've got past him three times. Absolute madness. As the result is going to be a 2-2. That Caesars have two 5-4 games back-to-back -back on aggregate. And Memphis Depay scores the winning goal. This is sensational stuff. But the next team we come up against, it is Manchester City. However, Wilson Esbrand starting. And an old Maserawi, Mateus Nunez, Fatawu, McAtee. As much as I love John McAtee, it should be beatable when his brother's playing. And guess what? It could be a 5-4 again. 3-2. Just one home game to go now, though. Just one home game. And it isn't 5-4. It's one apiece. Clive at suspension should be over in the league as it's Memphis Depay. I can't believe it's him. I just cannot believe it. And it looks like we might avoid Real Madrid in the final. Dortmund, this has fallen perfectly. Perfectly if we go ahead and beat them at the Olympus Stadion. But we've got to check the trophies. I said we needed three trophies in different countries. And I know the Champions League technically isn't a French one, but it's winning with a French club. And we've got two trophies in Portugal. As in the league, we were beaten to top spot by eight points. League one's been hard. And it's got me thinking, if we don't win this final, do we move on? I mean, that's a big if because we like our finals. Live that's still suspended, though. That is a huge miss. I believe I sold Jared Bowen. And yes, he's gone. Paolo Torre will have to play there, and we're going to give it our all with that team you see in front of you. So let's see how it goes. Jose Mourinho, Champions League final. He doesn't lose many of these. Although he did recently lose the Europa League final with Roma. We've got to think about that. Again, though, I don't know if you guys noticed, they have a striker by the certain name El Nusiri. Now, that rings a bell because he... Destroyed us in the Europa League last time out. Big save, Castiles. Early on there, he is popping up again as the corner coming in. And DA, what is going on? Terrible defending. 
And Daniel Mallon, seven minutes into this final, has BVB ahead. Quite poor, I can't lie. Is he an ex-Monaco player? I don't know why I've got a feeling he is, and that's just an open net. Pinball around our players' heads, and that is really, really shocking. We need to be better than that for a start, and DA, no, that pass is terrible. El New Series touched it, though. Come on. We can beat Dortmund. We've got the bloody chosen one in charge, and there's a ball from Jacob Ramsey down the line into Memphis Depay. He's been the main man of the moment, and that should have been such a better shot. Come on, Memphis. There's a corner ball to be delivered in here for the equaliser, and it's handled. Subitzer, a lifeline straight after their goal. Can't really see anything on the camera. We'll just skip it anyway. And we'll just get straight to this spot kick. It's Memphis Depay. We've got to go top corner. As he doesn't fully go top corner. But it is level now. And it is the 79 rated. Who doesn't stop scoring goals. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Down the middle to solve the riddle. Born penalty taker. Clinical man. And Jose's men are level. Entertaining this as Papadopoulos. I can't say that. On to Brandt. Brant's trying to get around us a little bit there. It's a terrible tackle, lads. Too many gaps as they get a shot off again and almost take the lead again. That is poor. We've got to do better than that as they've got the ball straight away from the corner and kept it. Good tackle, Schleiger, though. And this is a break for the slow Mapai through the middle. And I've just linked Memphis and Depay into one word as Balagoon's restricted to a faraway shot. That hasn't caused Koble many problems as Schleiger... Getting himself into a little bit of a rut right here. We've got to watch a sliding. There's a man on the yellow and an easy pass round the corner for Byron Gittens, of all people, to put BVB now 2-1 ahead. There's Apple Crumble. There's Custard and Crumble. And now there is the ASM Monaco Crumble. This is terrible. This is honestly terrible. El New Series around us again. And he's got a pass through again. And Daniel Mallon, big save. Relying on those saves as a big header at the near post as well. And Pablo Torre, leave it for your keeper, man. We should not be taking it out of the hands of the keeper. Terrible ball through. Pablo Torre trying again, trying hard. But we just can't get the ball off them. Byro Gittens through again. Ball just falls for Castiles. And the halftime whistle should go. But again, it's Dortmund flooding forward on an attack. Hincampier with the tackle. Although he's got a yellow, he's played rather well. And there's the halftime whistle. And lads, I'll tell you something. We need to be better at this rate. We're not winning this Champions League. So come on, better than this. Papastadopoulos, we can't let him dribble through. And oh my daves, Castiles. What a tackle as a man goes in the book. Don't tell me that's a penalty. It isn't. It's just a weird yellow card animation as the ball's going to come in. It's close to El Nusiri. He's the danger man. And I've got to say, Dortmund's still dominant. Ball that's long. Balagun with his header down. And this maybe gives us a chance to get forward. Florian Balagun. Come on. Finally a run on here. And it's the winger around the centre forward. Jacob Ramsey putting in a decent ball. But Andreas Christiansen not connecting correctly with that one. As a short free kick for Dortmund in our half still. And look at the gap that's in the middle. They've gone round us. And Savio has put it on a plate for El Nusiri. The man who lost us a European trophy last year. Might be doing the same right here. And I've just literally remembered. I've been trying to think... All game, even though it was last season. Who did we have in that final? And of course it was Dortmund. Of course it was this team that we're playing right now. And it looks like a repeat performance. That game we lost 3-2. And it was a hat-trick from the Moroccan. This game, it's 3-1. I mean, if we get one back, maybe there's a little bit of time for a second. Although I doubt it. Ball forward into Florian Balogun, who's got a bit of a run on here. Florian Balogun on the angle. We had to be greedy. Time's running out as Hincapié was lucky to avoid a second yellow there. And El Nusiri is through again. We need to come across to block the shot. And it is brilliant defending from that man, Hanko. Still, I don't know about timings, though. We're really running low on the clock. And Schleiger through the middle to Memphis Depay. I'm sorry, this game might have proved... It's one game too far, and he might need to retire soon. Florian Balogun, though, running around, and that is a goal back with one minute on the clock. Not bothered about replays there. We've just got to go and flood them. But the referee blows his whistle, and I don't believe it. Is that the first time we've lost a Champions League? 
in FC24. Congratulations, BVB. You've now beat Jose Mourinho in two finals, two finals with Monaco, which has me thinking, is it the club we're at that is letting us down? Now, as Jose Mourinho, we looked at our Porto team and thought we took it so far and I'm doing the same with this Monaco team. Some brilliant ratings, 88s, but we need a new job. As the first one we've applied for and we have got the position is Real Madrid. But I'll tell you something. Jose's been to the job interview and he's looked at that 10k a week and thought it's not the worst, but it's not great. Besides, he dreams further of a Premier League move. So what we've gone and done is applied to the other job and we have got the Chelsea position. A homecoming, yes on 10k a week again, but Jose's rich anyway. And how rich would it be if he moved back to Chelsea? Poch has been sacked. There must be still trouble at Chelsea. So Jose is going back. Here he is, third time lucky, even though he's definitely been lucky at Chelsea in the past. And I think it's only fitting with that graphic that I go ahead and join in the Jose Mourinho fun, putting the Chelsea kit on. As it's this team that we've inherited, and I can see there's a lot of strong players in the reserves. Okay, it's a lot different to how I thought it would be. As the first thing we'll do before making a team is actually check the squad hub this time. It's more efficient, See our best players. We've got three 88 rated. We could sign more. We've arrived in a transfer window. Noni Mandueke reaching potential a bit. Mikhailo Mudrik at 83. Borja at 83. Wow, this team has progressed. Is there Cold Palmer still here? Is he here? Yes, he is. But he's 79 rated. Not too great. Not great. As this is the best team we can make. We've got Nkunku sitting behind Brian Bobby as our striker. And to be fair, we've got a good defence. Hernandez out of position. Mama Shavili in goal. It's very good for Chelsea. And the budget of 134 million. Can't lie, isn't as much as I expected. But we can get rid of a couple of these players like Raheem Sterling. Sorry, mate. I don't think Jose is going to get on with you. Romeo Lavia, we don't play CDMs. Galan, we don't play wingbacks. As I've showed you the team too early as well, you know we're going to go back to the 3 4 2 1 Jose's formation. If we're doing a manager save and he's got a favoured formation, we'll respect it. That's going to require Balde training as a left mid. We've got Caicedo. He's going to have to train as a centre mid again. Hate bloody training CDMs to CM. As our first player, of course, out the door, Raheem Sterling. He couldn't wait to do his little run when Jose came. He's doing the rounds of Premier League top clubs. Arsenal is the next on the Raheem Sterling chopping board. That upgrades our budget magnificently to 1-2-1. We sold... A couple more players, obviously. You don't just get gifted money, come on. As Dizassi was one of them who's left. We're going to try Chalaba. I feel Jose can improve Chalaba. As if you couldn't guess the first signing we're making. I think you haven't watched the rest of the episode. Of course, if you can't beat them, join them. Or the opposite way around. If you beat them, then go and play for the manager. Because we've just signed from Champions League winners, El Nusiri. Yusuf's cost us a lot, but I was not taking any chances. I wanted this man straight in straight away, so obviously... We're gonna have to sacrifice for Fana. Sorry, mate. And of course, Brobby, as Yusuf is starting. Players I'm thinking about replacing now are Mudrik, Madueke. Mm, I'm unsure. We do still have 153 million, so money's not an issue. As I found a player I'm signing, and this may come as a shock. Mama in goal. Well, not anymore. We've gone ahead and signed the man I told you to remember, Diogo Costa from Real Madrid. 70 million plus Mama Stavilli. Better to say Madrid's got their money, but we have our number one from day one. And that, my friends, completes the team. Surely going into this season. And Wolves will be the first team to face the mighty Mourinho's Blues. And their team's not too great. On paper, anyway. Our team is phenomenal on paper, but it's still got to get the result. Jose, not keeping a clean sheet, but back in England with a bang to Debo. Lucas Hernandez and Mikhailo Mudrik. And don't worry, lads. I did my research last season. Looked at the Premier League, saw Chelsea in the top four. 
So we've got Champions League football with Napoli, Stad Renier and BCS Young Boys. Can Mourinho go back to back finals? And has Jose Mourinho impacted this team? That is a Lucas Hernandez light in the Premier League. It has. It's affected the Prem. We are second. Jose doing Chelsea things with Chelsea. Doing Prem things with Chelsea. Because this is better. This is better than fighting PSG. We can beat Man City surely. As Portsmouth we have in the FA Cup. It is only the first round. And Carabao. Oh, we're out. Of course, like I said before and previously, I would like another trophy. I feel like two Portuguese trophies and a Champions League wouldn't be enough. Although we are through in the Champions League. And of course, if we win it, I'd take it as we finish top of the group and no one near us. We did lose games, don't get me wrong. As top scorer for us, of course, is Yusuf El -Nusiri. What a man, just what a man. I knew watching him against us that we needed him here to try and win finals. We're going to make it into finals, of course. And Kunku trying to help on that matter. And Mikhailo Mudrik. Got the best out of them three as Brian Bobby couldn't take being a backup. And he's gone to Palace for 110 million. Lucas Hernandez, on the other hand, going for a free. But we should have a 100 mil. As here's the man we're signing to replace the outgone man. And you'll recognise that face. If you watch Serie A football, Lucas Hernandez out and in comes Bremer from, of course, Juve as let's go give this Champions League a go. Come on, we've built a team worthy of potentially winning this first time round as their team is okay. Some good defenders, of course. I mean, you don't doubt it from Simeone, but it is Enya Serie A clutch man and Balde, the ex-Barca man. Getting Chelsea the narrow advantage. Still another leg to go though. And in the second leg, we will take that draw. A missed penalty costing them. A shame I see no cup games. So it means we might have been beaten by Portsmouth. But by a Leverkusen, the next team to face us. Jose was one who really backed Xabi Alonso to become a manager. And a good one after he retired. And of course, he's doing that in the Bundesliga. But this time around, the chosen one beats the chosen one's chosen one. Yeah, I know that might sound confusing, but trust me, it made sense. If you really think about it, as getting there, 4-3. Jose Mourinho loves high-scoring aggregate games. We are through to a semi-final, and it is Mourinho, of course, against a former club. And I've gone ahead and checked the team, something I didn't want to do. They've gone for a 4-4-2 diamond formation. Or the 4-1-2-1-2. Whatever you want to call it, as Belly Goal has the only goal. Not the best occasion, having to go to the Bernabeu. But it's the predicament we found ourselves in. And the chosen one. The chosen one, the special one, David Fofana. No, not him, of course. I'm talking about Jose, Vinny Jr., El Nusiri, and Enzo. See, Chelsea squeezed through. What an occasion. What a job. You just love a comeback as Inter, 4-0, will be the team we face in the final. And yes, I'm repeating myself again. It's a Jose Mourinho derby. He faces one of his former clubs. I'm not going to bother looking how they got there. I'm just going to look at the Premier League table. Not only has Jose took his old team, Chelsea, to a Champions League final straight away, but he has won the Premier League in his first year back. He has not lost it, and now it is four for him. I think it's four anyway, as we're not in the FA Cup final. We knew that in Carabao Cup. No luck in there, of course. One thing we're going to be looking at, though, is the players. And you can see Diogo Costa, our best player. It's funny that how FIFA works, or FC24. The player we had on our first team sheet back in the final three teams later. And El Nusiri, the man who's Costa's finals, scored 32 goals overall and will play in a final under Jose Mourinho as he tries for the second time to win the UCL trophy. And here we go. There's the clock on the wall, counting down to kickoff. And we've got some bad news before that. Unfortunately, Enzo Fernandez is suspended. So in comes Joel Linton to the team. And I wonder how he's actually going to do. Of course, trained fully now in the art of midfielding. Moved back 
from Newcastle into that position. Then again, he can do stupid things like that. Who the hell is he passing to? As Fratesi now. Oh, my days. Oh, good tackle to Debo. Wrapping his foot around the man to get the ball away. That could have been something as Christopher... Christopher and Kunku. Chrissy, mate. What is that? Jose Mourinho won't be happy. Although, from it, we've won the ball high up the field. And we've got a pass into Joe Linton here. Joe Linton got the ball struck through bodies. Come on, we can do this. We don't want to be bottling three finals in a row. It's a short corner routine from Jose. Not usually like him. And Tadebo, the centre half, trying to squeeze one in again. Good this. Very good. And oh my days, that was confusing then. The man who just had the shot running the length of the field to defend a shot. I mean, it is good practice. And Medueke finds some Kunku. Pass that back forward. This could be a good move here. We're passing it around nicely. Still need that cutting edge, though. And still need to cut through their defence. Mikhailo Mudrik drilling in. Mudrik to pull the ball back. And it's just not tap around the defenders. Yet again, another chance, though. And this time... Mudrick's going to try and play it through to Christopher Unkunku to spin. Unkunku on the angle. Blocked by De Vry. Chelsea on fire here in the UCL final. Maybe if we use the man who we signed in El Nisiri from this corner, we could get in front. It's not him, but it's a header. And it's a block off the line. Inter are behind. Not scoreline wise yet, but there will be soon if we continue on. As Mudrick, look at the run from Balde. This is good work. Overlapping football. Something Chelsea haven't been playing in real life recently. And look at that. How is Yusuf? Not making the net move. This is obscene. Obscene pressure. And if Inter ever go in front in this game, I genuinely don't know what I'll do with myself. Jose should retire as this is brilliant football again. Madueke, edge of the box. Oh, good play. Good play. This is some of the best football I've ever seen as the corner ball comes in. It's going to fall here on the chest of Joe Linton and falls back to Dodibo. Blasted in. And there we go. A penalty kick. It's took a lot of luck to get to this. And it's took a lot of banging on the door. And to be fair, it might be a very, very lucky call for us. But I don't care. I'm going to take it. Christopher Nkunku against Sol Bamba. And that, my friends, is 1-0 Chelsea. And also that, my friends, is not Sol Bamba. I don't know why I said that. The excitement getting to me. The excitement caused by that man right there and his ability to stick penalties in the top corner. That is it. 1-0 at the break for the Chels. Jose Mourinho might be getting that trophy that he has, of course, alluded. It would make four for the episode. Two, of course, in Portugal. One in England. None in France, as we need Madueke to keep on running. Brilliant ball down the line into him. Go on, naughty Madueke. Maybe all the way. Or maybe pull it back for Yusuf El Janiri to strike. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is 2-0 to the Blues. The goal we craved and the goal we've got. Our number 10 blasting it in. And I, I've said it before. I will say it again. If you can't beat them, join them and win the UCL yet again. Also, it looks at this moment in time. We cannot write Inter out of it just yet. We know we've lost these finals recently. And again, we weren't as dominant with our play in other finals like the Dortmund one. They were absolutely all over us like a rash. And Reta Gui can't get that ball past to Debo. Well, he does, but Trevor Chalaber, Jose's man, doing his job. Knows how to train defenders up. As El Nusiri, just stick him up front and he will get a goal, it seems. Could he get two, though? Yusuf El Janiri running inside and getting the low shot off. Unlucky that as well. Unlucky. Madweke still finding Unkunku. We are still dominant in this final. I... I don't think there's a threat of losing it as Kaiseido trying his luck from CM. I don't mind it at this point of games, but then again, it is the Champions League final and Bremer oh, just showed a little bit of the ball to his man. And we're going to keep on going. Christopher Unkunku with the gap. So close to a third. So close to a third as all my days and he stopped on the line. El Nisiri again. We like these corners. Madweke, that's another one just flashed over the bar. I guess that's why they call him Trevor Chalabar. As a good joke to end the joke era for Jose. Losing the Europa League final with Roma in real life. Then with Monaco. Two finals in a row. He comes back to Chelsea, his old club. And Mourinho 
has done a masterclass for the UCL title. Love it. And picking a man of the match in that game is quite difficult, you know. But I think I've got to give it to the man of the episode, really, when he hasn't been playing for us even. Yusuf N. Nyasiri. He is going to go down as a legend. It was close towards Tadebo, but he's going to be lifting the trophy anyway. As the best thing about these manager saves, you never know where we're going to be lifting that thing. But Jose does it back at his home. If you have enjoyed this manager career and you want more of those, comment down below. If not, comment your team, comment your questions, and I will get round to answering you guys, of course.